Hello and welcome again to yet another video of me sitting with my red hat on in an isolation room in a clinic in Moscow where I am getting treatment for my primary progressive multiple sclerosis that I was diagnosed with officially in November, previously diagnosed with MS in general in August. This is one of the only really effective treatments that you can do and I had to come to Russia really to get it done as soon as possible. Now, I'm not really going to talk to you about MS. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about things that generally interest me from a philosophical point of view. And you might guess it, it's going to be God. And in this case, it's going to be the problem of evil. In other words, my MS, how can that be seen in light of an all-loving, all-knowing, all-powerful God? And uh, this is nothing that, you know, nothing I'm going to say is going to be groundbreaking. This is basically the problem of evil argument. Why is there so much suffering in the world given this omni-God? So, you know, I'd like to see how that works, how, how my scenario works in light of some of the theology and, and, and philosophy of religion. Um, and the problem of evil is uh, this understanding of, of suffering in those contexts. And my suffering is over and above suffering of other people and below suffering of still other people. I'm on a kind of continuum of suffering. But the point is that, that if life was to be fair, all things remaining equal, then I would have cards that have been dealt to me that are far more unfair than, than someone else. Again, all things remaining equal. It could be that I've done things to have deserved this. And we'll come on to that. So there are a bunch of options that are open to me if I believed in God, which I don't. But these are the options available to me because I have a debilitating disease that at the moment, if it continues, I'll end up in a wheelchair, being hoisted into a bath, not being able to swallow, being needing full-time carers and basically leading a pretty torrid life. That's the that's the trajectory of someone with primary progressive multiple sclerosis that takes on a slightly different format to someone with the regular relapse and remitting multiple sclerosis, although they can eventually end up at the same place. So the first option is that God doesn't exist. Shit happens. This is part of evolution. Diseases and conditions evolve and mutate. Our bodies evolve and mutate, and we end up getting um, things wrong with us that fall into the remit of evolution and biology and chemistry and physics. God doesn't exist, shit happens. That's my preferred explanation of the events, of course. Now, the second option is that God does exist, and he's the philosopher's God, the, the, the deistic God, sort of the one that, that starts off the universe, flicks that first domino and watches it happen. Doesn't really get involved in the goings on in the earthly dimensions. Um, that I happen to have multiple sclerosis or people die of cancer or people die of malaria and wars is seemingly irrelevant to him, or at least if it does hurt, or affect him. He doesn't seem to get involved to want to change those things from happening. And it's hard to see how such a God could even have personal characteristics of being, for example, all loving. Uh, this is not the God of classical theism, where classical theism is all loving, all knowing, or um, all powerful, and sometimes all present, omnipresent. So this deistic God is certainly not the God of, of the classical theism and is somewhat an impersonal entity that sits outside the universe and almost watches this as a game. 
Um, so that's your second option. Your third option is that God does exist, but it appears he doesn't like me very much. <laughs> this might be because I'm a bad person or because I don't believe in him. One of those two can be the same thing, obviously. Um, I, I might have done really bad things in my life. Uh, my works and deeds might, might warrant punishment. And this is in some way my punishment. Either way, he's knowingly allowed me to develop this condition. Now, I'm going to bring in something here called divine foreknowledge. Some fears to split as to whether God fully knows every single event, event in advance. Of course, if God doesn't know every single event in advance, then free, freely will decisions. I don't believe in those, but he wouldn't know the outcomes of those. He might have some kind of probabilistic guess, but, but it seems like creation would be rather random there. But if he does know everything in advance, he's created me, he's designed me, he's designed the entire universe so that he knows that I will eventually get to this position and get multiple sclerosis and in some way be punished over and above someone who hasn't. Now, this seems to me inherently unfair. You know, the, the, the condition developed naturally, but he didn't see it necessary to stop it in any way. He has the power and the love and the knowledge to put my body right, and yet doesn't. So therefore, this is either the permissive or the omissive will of God. Either he wants it to happen, or he's not bothered about it not happening. So it's the will of God that I, that I end up with this debilitating condition. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is very similar to the last one where he was knowingly planned for me to develop this condition. So, so actually, this, the, his creation, it wasn't just a creation where, where he knew this would come about as a kind of side effect or a corollary of, of, of creation. It's almost as if he created this universe so that I got MS. Um, and, and this is an explicitly willed decision, you know, take that Pierce, you know, you deserve that. I've created this universe so that you get MS. But of course you could say that for any person in a, in a position of suffering as well. Now with both those last two options, it appears that the development of the condition can be seen in one of sort of three ways, I suppose. A, I deserved it. Therefore, it is some form of retribution or punishment. So I've done something to warrant me getting this condition in, in the judgmental eyes of God. Second one, B, I deserved it in as much as the conditions serve to bring about a greater good. So it's slightly different. So it's not just that I deserved it because I'm a bastard and God says, right, you've done this, so you're going to get this punishment. It might be that he's using me to create a greater good. Um, uh, it, it, the trolley experiment where you, you pull a lever to kill one person to save five people. I am the person who's being sacrificed with MS in order to, for a greater good to come about. Maybe it could be that, that the cure for MS comes out of my particular case of having MS. So. So I am instrumental in, in God's, God's plans here to bring about a greater good. Um, huge problems with this with regard to theistic morality because as thinkers like William Lane Craig say, consequentialism, which is what this is, my, my pain is, is, is bringing about a greater consequ consequence. So this is kind of utilitarianism, consequentialism. He would say it's a terrible ethic. You don't need God for it. Uh, he, he pulls it apart, he doesn't like it at all. So if you do, as a Christian, adhere to this second notion of why I have MS, then you have, you have a lot of work to do to try and establish that consequentialism is a viable option for your theistic morality. The third one is I didn't necessarily deserve it per se, but the existence of MS 
in the world offers a benefit in some capacity. So again, this is maybe consequentialist. There's a greater good that comes about as a result of having MS in the universe as opposed to not having it. And I'm just one of the unlucky ones who happens to have developed the condition. It's nothing personal. It's just a case that I'm being used instrumentally for the greater good of the universe in some way over some period. So this is very much connected to the initial one, except it's, it's not personal. You know, Jonathan Pierce, you've got MS. Sorry about that. I didn't really plan for you to have MS, just a bunch of people to have them, because actually it performs a greater good in the long run. But again, we defer back to some form of consequentialist morality. Now, uh, the confusion comes, of course, when, when we see much of this God as being omniscient, right? Having that 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 knowledge such such that he has a full divine foreknowledge of all the future events, irrespective of free will, all the future counterfactuals. If this happens, then that happens. If I deserve this, as in option A that, that I mentioned above, then he designed the world with a full foreknowledge that I would be the one who would be, for whatever reason, uh, the one. So I would be, for whatever reason there might be for this, then there is little sense to be made in the whole scenario. It appears to be the case of setting a test for humanity but this full knowledge of the results of that test render it rather pointless. So I always liken this to um, if I was a teacher giving a test to a bunch of children and I knew 100% what results, infallibly, 100% what results all the children would get, what would be the point of me giving that test? The test is to give me new knowledge that I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's maybe you could contrive a way to say that the test gives benefit to those children in some way. But as far as a test for me is concerned, if I know the answers to that infallibly, then there's no point in giving a test. So if I'm, if I'm testing MS out on the world and I know the answers to, to, to whatever I want to find, find out from giving people MS, what's the point of giving people MS or any other disease? All you're doing is, is, is making them suffer for no decent reason. Another issue in the case of deserving this is that there appear to be far worse people on earth than me who don't get any kind of ill health or just deserts in their earthly life. Now, I'm not saying I'm some kind of messiah, of course, but I'm fairly sure there are serial murderers and rapists out there who, who are somewhat more evil and horrible than I am. I'm, I don't think I'm a complete bastard. Uh, I, I try to live my life ethically, uh, I try to do the best I can, and I try to help people in the, in the ways that I do. Um, so there seems to be some kind of unfairness with, and this, is, this kind of goes back to the Maccabean times, the intertestamental period, where you had the Hellenistic Jews who were persecuting the kind of more orthodox Jews, and those Orthodox Jews were asking God, what, if we're the chosen people, how come we're getting all the shit? How come people are giving, giving us hassle if we're, if we're the chosen? Why do, why do bad things happen to good people? And of course, this is where you started to see notions of heaven and hell develop as they stole these ideas from the Hellenistic Jews and from the Greeks. So... Um, this, this kind of plays merry havoc with, with why, why me and not people who are seemingly more deserving than me to have some kind of retributive punishment in, in, a, in this kind of physical way uh, of a condition like this. Um, you know, it appears to be a case of double standards. Now, I know this sounds like I'm being possibly a little bit conceited because I'm placing myself morally above uh, a, an atheistic mass murderer who has never been caught and has lived an enjoyable and fulfilled existence. But I think I'm not the worst person in the world. As I've mentioned many times before, you cannot use heaven to balance the books. 
Now, this is an important point to make. Many people say that, oh, do you know what? Bad things happen on Earth because, and it's all right. It's all right if things don't make sense on Earth because, Earth because it all makes sense in heaven. If a six month old baby dies on Earth, then it's, it's going to live its life in heaven just fine. Thank you very much. But again, this goes back to, to consequentialist morality, which is a problem for the theist. So nice to say that, that Jim over here, the lovely guy Jim, I walk up to him and punch him full in the face and break his jaw. And then after that, I give him compensation of £5,000. What I've done is given him compensation, but I haven't necessarily morally justified what I've done, unless I'm really using a particular type of consequentialism. So Jim says, that's terrible, you horrible, horrible person. Thanks for the £5,000, it might make things better. Actually, I might even say it was worth it but it doesn't morally justify my evil action. Heaven is exactly like that. So terrible things can happen on earth and you can't just say, oh, it's okay because I'm going to give them eternity in heaven. What you're doing is you're paying off that, that moral infraction. Now, for the consequentialist, you might say that's fine. Okay, because the consequences that come about from that moral action, that moral badness, outweigh the you know the, the moral evil and so therefore it ends up being calculated as morally good but in order to do that you have to adhere to moral consequentialism and theists just don't like doing that so heaven is is compensation not moral justification it doesn't justify morality unless you use certain types of moral frameworks that theists generally don't like um, so, uh, uh, you know, it's fine by me. I mean, I could probably argue that, that it does make sense, but, but your normal theologian would, would certainly st struggle with that. And I may be missing other options here, but, but the point seems to be that any kind of scenario where humans are less fairly treated by God effectively as designer creator we have god being unfair i mean i've talked about this before in mentalizing deficits amongst autistic people so when you have certain or it doesn't even have to be autistic people men um certain subgroups of people it doesn't matter if you have certain subgroups of people who are less likely to believe in a loving god a loving personal god less likely to come into a union with say for example the christian god through natural means, through environmental means, no matter what they are, then God has set up a scenario that is unfair for portions of the population. And in that way, God is unfair. And, and, and it's the same with these sort of physical conditions that people suffer through, through just seemingly random, you know, random rolls of the dice or, or de deals of the cards and and i think that's just inherently unfair so my opinion of this vis-a-vis -vis the problem of evil is that this fits perfectly within the problem of evil in, in that there is unnecessary suffering that appears to have no good reason and the only recourse that the, the the theist can come back to is something called skeptical theism which is a get out of jail free card which is oh there must be a reason it's okay we just don't know the reason god works in mysterious ways i don't buy that i don't buy that as a rational thinker because it's a promissory note that has absolutely no real substance to it um and and that makes very little sense to me. I mean, it, 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 there's a logical application to that. You could say, well, logically, there might be a reason why I have MS. But again, most of those reasons will come down to some form of consequentialism um, or, or certain retribution where God just doesn't like me. But then why does he not like me more than other people who are worse than me so i think i think you know there are huge amounts of problems with 
with this line of thinking uh, with the problem of evil and obviously with God. So as a little chat about my own personal experiences with my health condition and how I see that in, in the context and light of the existence or non-existence of uh, a supposedly all-loving, all-knowing, all-powerful uh, God. I hope that makes sense and uh, that you got some kind of um, enjoyment out of that. I uh, unfortunately, it seems like I was in darkness for most of that video, so I do apologize. <laughs>